The hip joint is made up of the acetabular fossa and the head of the femur. It is a synovial ball and socket joint made deeper and more congruent by a fibroligamentous labrum. The hip derives strong support from the iliofemoral, pubofemoral and ischiofemoral ligaments. The hip is innervated by the femoral, sciatic and obturator nerves. The muscles associated with hip movement include the glutei, piriformis, quadratus femoris, iliosoas, tensofascialata, rectus femoris, biceps femoris, semimembranosus, semitendinosus, and the adductor group. Not all of the above muscles are attached directly to the hip joint, but are closely involved in hip function. The hip, being a ball and socket joint, is capable of many movements including flexion, extension, abduction, adduction, circumduction, and lateral and medial rotation. Begin the examination of the hip with a general observation. Note any congenital or developmental abnormality like coxa vara, coxa valga, increased or decreased anteversion and leg lengths. Note the pelvic and lumbar posture and decide whether these may be related to the hip, for instance, due to a hip flexion contracture. Then note the lower extremity posturing. In osteoarthritis, there may be flexion, adduction, and internal rotation of the hip. To avoid repetition when observing the hip, bear in mind the general principles we stated in the previous chapter. After observation, continue with palpation. Identify and palpate clinically important structures, including the greater trochanter, the tendons, the bursi, the iliopsoas tendon and muscle, the inguinal ligament, the femoral artery, consider the possibility of hernia, <coughs> and also feel the inguinal lymph nodes. Then palpate the major muscle groups surrounding the hip. Note any swelling, nodules, the muscle tone in the hip region, and lower extremity the ischiotuberosities and bursi, and the sciatic nerve. Next, get the patient to perform active movements. These are performed in the standing position and, if necessary, offer the patient support. Instruct or demonstrate to them how to flex, extend, abduct, adduct, and to rotate the hip internally and externally. And finally, ask them to demonstrate circumduction by drawing a circle using the whole leg. Internal and external rotation may also be performed in the supine position with the patient's hip and knee flexed at 90 degrees. Flexion Abduction, adduction, circumduction, and lateral and medial rotation. Evaluate the patient's range of movement, note any abnormal clicking or popping sounds, and evidence of pain. Next, examine the passive movements of the hip in the supine position. Bring the patient's hip and knee to 90 degree flexion, then guide the hip joint through flexion, external rotation, internal rotation, abduction, adduction, and circumduction. To properly evaluate extension, place the patient in the side line or prone position and support the patient's thigh 
The leg is then taken behind the patient to assess the range of extension. Note the range of movements achieved and the presence of pain. If the range of movement is reduced in a particular plane, then ascertain whether this is due to arthritic changes, capsular restrictions, muscle tension, or resisted due to pain. Examination of active resisted movements should be performed in the supine position. Assess the major muscle groups acting on the hip joint. Test flexion. Extension. Abduction. Adduction. Internal rotation and external rotation. Note the muscle strength, joint stability, the presence of pain or crepitations, and compare with the opposite side. If you need to assess some common functional movements of the hip, you may wish to ask the patient to stand on one leg, to do some stair climbing, walking, squatting, and bending forward. 